First of all, I would like to thank all the organizers, especially Yulia, for giving me this opportunity in this interesting workshop. I'm Takumi Kaosets, an assistant professor at Osaka University, Japan. So in this presentation, I would like to talk about unconventional tactile sensors in soft robotics field. So as you know, in recent years, soft robotics has been attracting researchers' interest. So in soft robotics, a robot composed of soft materials uses its own softness to provide a wide variety of functions. In this presentation, I focus on tactile sensors, so I introduce here soft robots such as a robot hand and fingers. The study shown in the upper left was conducted more than 20 years ago, but you can see that the soft finger manipulated the object successfully. So this kind of manipulation is not easy when using a rigid robotic hand, you know. So the softness of the finger itself enables to manipulate objects without precise control. I mean the soft finger possibly deforms and their physical interactions. The upper right shows a jamming gripper. Jamming gripper has a single mass of granular material. When the gripper is pressed onto a target object, the granular material possibly conforms to the target shape. When applied a vacuum to the gripper, the granular material in the gripper contracts and hardens to hold the object without any difficult control. Of course, there are so many other soft robot hands being studied, and novel fabrication methods for soft robot have been proposed. So as you can see, softness provides several functions, such as dexterous object manipulation without precise control. So there are many, many studies to provide tactile sensing in soft robotics. Tactile sens sensors work as a safe sensors to measure the deformation caused by external force or self-deformation in soft robot. Tactile sensation has many modalities like pressure, slippage, temperature, pain, but I here focus on pressure sensing mostly related in robotic applications. So many researchers have been trying to try different approaches to give the soft robot tactile sensing. The upper left employ liquid metal and the upper right employ ionic gels as a soft and stretchable pressure sensitive resistor. In the lower left, the sensor, I mean transducer itself is not soft and stretchable, but the stretchable electronic wiring enables to mount the sensor on a soft robotic hand. As mentioned earlier, a soft robotic hand can manipulate various objects without precise control or feedback using sensory signals like tactile information. But tactile sensor is essential to know the information of contact object and grasping set. So here I show another aspect of the soft robotics. Some researchers have proposed that rich dynamics in soft materials can be utilized for computing and sensing. The rest of figures show a study on physical reservoir computing. A soft body is used as a reservoir which has rich dynamics such as nonlinearity and hysteresis. In this case, a soft body, which looks like an octopus arm, is used as a physical reservoir with several loop band sensors attached as read out of the reservoir. In the right figure, a soft body is used for hardware, in this case, a robust filter for tactile information. Tactile sensors are randomly distributed in the soft body with various depths. The sensors embedded in the deep part of the finger are able to acquire the information filtered by its soft material property. Both examples utilize the rich dynamics in soft materials for computing and sensing. However, embedding hard and non-stretchable sensors reduce or breaks rich dynamics in soft materials. And uh, this is just off topic, but I am joining now this Japan's big project related to soft robotics. Both the projects have some research topics utilizing rich dynamics in soft material for computing. So please visit the website for the details of this project. So let's get back to the original topic. So in summary, tactile sensing is essential in soft robotics, but integration of tactile sensor to soft robot is not easy. I think the biggest challenge is removal of the hardness from the sensor itself and its surroundings. The tactile sensor system is typically composed of transducer, wiring, and measurement circuit. But you know, all of these elements are originally composed of the hard materials. Of course, various studies tackles to make these elements soft and stretchable. For example, printed electronics is used. 
However, still it's quite difficult to make extremely soft and stretchable materials like the soft body of the soft robot. So issues on embedding hard and non-stretchable sensors are summarized like this. Embedding rigid sensor reduces the softness of the soft material and deteriorates the sensor and its surroundings durability and local stress concentration and weak interface around the sensor. So we would like to seek another approach other than developing, developing soft functional materials. So here I, inter I introduce our proposal to solve the, dis the issues. We propose inductive tactile sensor that can separate soft and hard materials structurally. The sensor makes soft and hard materials not connect each other directly. Our proposal is a method for estimating deformation of soft materials using coils and magnetic markers based on electromagnetic magnetic phenomena. I introduce here two approaches we previously pr proposed. First, I introduced the left approach employing coil and iron particles. In the first approach, we propose a soft triaxis sensor using coil and magnetic marker. The sensor consists of a magnetic marker, silicon rubber, and coils. The magnetic marker is a disc band, black, black, black silicon rubber containing iron particles. So when we apply a contact force to the silicon rubber, we can estimate the mag magnitude and direction of the applied contact force like this. And uh, as you can see, there, uh, there is no problem if we apply the large impact force to the sensor because the impact force cannot reach to the fragile sensing elements. So here shows the structure and the advantages of our proposed sensor. In this structure, the distance between the coils and uh, iron particles will determine the inductances. This is because iron particles has a large magnetic permeability, which determines the inductance of coil. So inductance of the coils uh, indicates the three-dimensional three displacement of the surface silicon rubber, that is the applied toric axis force. So here are summarized the uh, advantages of the proposed sensor. In the proposed sensor, we only embed iron particles in soft materials. There's no hard materials in the silicon rubber. So there, in, and there is no direct electric, electrical connections to the soft rubber. The rubber is just put on the coil. The contact part and sensing part are structurally separated. Therefore, a contact force is not directly applied to fragile sensing elements. So this is the working principle. Four inductances of coils indicate three-dimensional displacement of magnetic marker. The inductances increase or decrease with the distance between the magnetic marker and each coil as shown here. We here def define three inductance values to estimate the applied toric axis force from inductance and obtain the relationship between the applied force and defined, inductance, de defined inductances based on experiments. I mean, it's a calculation process. So based on simple calibration, we can estimate the applied toric axis force from measured inductance like this. So as you can see, inductive tactile sensor using coil and iron particles realizes to measure the contact force without embedding any hard materials in soft materials. Okay, let's move to the second approach. So in the first approach, we propose a tactile sensor without embedding your hard materials in soft rubber. We can successfully keep a rubber soft uh, even though we install tactile sensing ab ability to the rubber. The remaining issue of the first approach is that the uh, digital coil circuit must be pressed near the point where the contact force is applied. I mean the rubber containing iron particles is pressed near, in this case pressed directly above a coil circuit, which is generally rigid and non-stretchable. In the second approach, we can solve the, this issue by using a flow channel and closing liquid metal. So this video summarizes the second approach. We here propose a soft inductive tactile sensor using a flow channel and closing liquid metal. So the sensor body is a highly soft and stretchable silicon rubber enclosing only liquid metal. So as you can see, the sensor does not break if uh, even if it has deformations or bending, uh, bending are applied. And a coil circuit is placed under the sensor body. 
this uh, eyeball in plastic box is just a holder of both the coil and the rubber, not a sensing element. And just by, just by placing silicon rubber, which has a flow channel and closed liquid metal, we can obtain the applied force as coil inductance like this. This is because the liquid metal in the flow channels uh, displaced according to the applied force. Then the amount of liquid metal changes above the coil, and as a result, the inductance changes based on an eddy current effect. So here I show the structure and advantages of the uh, second approach. Some of the advantages are common with the first approach. In this proposed sensor, we embed only liquid metal flow channel in soft materials. There is no hard materials in the silicon rubber. And there is no direct electrical connections to the liquid metal, although conventional tactile sensors using liquid metal require to insert electrical electrodes into liquid metal to measure the impedance or resistance of the liquid metal. The third point is important. The contact part is structurally apart from the sensing part. Therefore, the contact part is fully soft and stretchable. So this is working principle. The proposed sensor detects the displacement of the liquid metal in the flow channel by using an external coil. The upper image shows the appearance and the cross-sectional view of the sensor. The flow channel enclosed in liquid metal consists of a disc-shaped uh, reservoir named the contact reservoir and a half disc shaped reservoir named the detection reservoir and a linear channel that connects them. The detection reservoir has a thin silicon rubber here that separates the liquid metal from the outside of the rubber. The lower figure summarizes the working principle of the sensor. A spiral coil is placed under the detection reservoir here. When a normal force is applied to the contact reservoir, the liquid metal in the reservoir is pushed toward the detection reservoir via a linear channel. As a, as a result, the moving liquid metal cause, causes expansion of the detection reservoir in the rightward direction. So here we employ an eddy current effect. As the amount of liquid metal above the detection reservoir increases, the eddy current flowing through the liquid metal increases, resulting in the uh, decrease in the uh, inductance of coil. So we can estimate the applied normal force by monitoring the change in the coil inductance. So to investigate the sensor performances, we conduct some experiments using this setup and nine type of sensors. A robotic stage was used to apply a normal force to the sensor. We prepared nine here, we prepared here nine types of sensor bodies. These bodies has three different contact reservoir diameters and three different flow channel thicknesses. So we investigated the relationship between the response and the contact reservoir diameter. The results, the results demonstrate that the larger contact reservoir has larger sensor response and larger signal to noise ratio. These graphs show the inductance change versus the applied normal force. The horizontal axis is an applied normal force and the vertical one is the change in inductance from initial value. The results show that the inductance decreases with the magnitude of the applied force. So we also calculated the uh, signal to noise ratio of the sensor. And we found that the uh, proposed sensor has a high signal noise ratio of, the, of about 65 decibels. And as, as one of the application of the proposed sensor, we fabricated a totally soft pneumatic bending actuator equipped with the proposed sensor. So as you can see, the sensor first respond to the bending, then respond to the uh, applied force like this. So that is the sensor responds to both the applied force and the, the bending. So based on this, this result, we can successfully fabricate a totally soft robot embed, embed uh, tactile sensors. So in summary, I would like to provide some discussion and the future perspectives on soft robotics. In the presentation, I introduced unconventional tactile sensors which can separate soft and hard materials by employing a, a coil and magnetic marker. So nowadays, uh, such inductive tactile sensors have been proposed by many research groups. Of course, there is a similar approach to uh, separate soft and hard materials. For example, a vision-based approach has been proposed. 
I believe that this um, conventional tactile sensing technology become a key approach to integrate tactile sensing with soft robot without any reduction in property of soft materials. Another ex expectation is to achieve actuation and tactile sensing in a single element. The rubber containing iron particle used here was originally used for magnetic actuators. For example, if a large magnetic field is applied to the rubber containing iron particles, the rubber deforms or changes its, its hardness. In the proposed sensor structure, the coil also can act as an electromagnet to generate magnetic field. Therefore, this coil and rubber pair may act not only as tactile sensors, but also as actuators. In fact, this Just concept, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Okay. In fact, this concept has been proposed by a research group in the United Kingdom. And innovation in the fabrication method of soft materials also facilitates the combination of sensors and soft robot. Recent progress in 3D printing technology enables to simultaneous 3D printing of actuators and sensors, including tactile sensor. Uh, novel fabrication methods are expected to lead to uh, unconventional sensors with unconventional working principles. Okay, so this study was carried out in Osaka University and the University of Tokyo. And I would like to thank all, to all my supervisors and colleagues. And I also would like to thank all the organizers again. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Takumi. Um, we can thank Takumi. Um, yeah, you, you should imagine the, the applause. Thank you very much. Really nice talk, really great work. Um, I'll give the floor for questions yeah. for a minute or two. So if you have a question, please unmute your microphone and just pose it. I'll give you five to 10 seconds to do that. Otherwise, I will maybe maybe ask one one question. So, um, quite an amazing technology. Um, but Takumi, maybe you could um, tell us what is, from your view, would be the the main challenge for you know widespread of such such sensors, uh, you know, in integrating them in the hands. Is it you know the the cost and how difficult it is to produce them? Is it maybe integration with the rest of the system? Is it processing of uh, the signals or or something else? And then maybe how would you estimate um, how, how difficult it is. So how, how difficult those challenges, when would you expect this could be you know, spread all over the hands, the body hands? A uh, big challenge is uh, in tactile sensor is, uh, uh, found, uh, uh, is to find the uh, find, uh, application the uh, tactile sensing. So many researchers have been proposing the, uh, many, many kinds of the tactile sensors, transducers, and uh, many uh, working principles, but uh, uh, just the sensor development. It's not uh, useful to the uh, actual uh, robotic applications. So we have to uh, seek the uh, actual application for the uh, robotic applications. Thank you. 